I'm very excited to share with you how to prepare for the Great American Eclipse of August 21st, 2017, particularly I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, lunar versus solar eclipses because there's a lot of confusion about that and then when and where and how to view it safely and some fun ways to photograph the eclipse even without any special equipment. Many of us have seen lunar eclipses and we think, gee, isn't that about the same as a solar eclipse? But it's actually very different. With a lunar eclipse, the Earth is creating a shadow onto the moon, uh, whereas with a solar eclipse, the moon is creating a shadow onto the sun. Now, the Earth is a lot bigger than the moon, so that the shadow of the Earth completely covers the moon, so that anywhere that it's nighttime on the Earth's surface, so basically half the Earth's surface, will be able to view uh, the entire lunar eclipse. However, the moon being much smaller than the Earth really only casts a small shadow over a very small portion of the Earth. Fortunately, the moon, uh, although it's 400 times smaller than the sun, is 400 times closer than the sun, so that the moon and sun are almost evenly matched in size. And depending on how close the moon happens to be to the Earth, uh, at the time. If it's close, like in the case of a super moon that you may have heard about, or if it's farther away, it uh, may give different types of eclipses. So this is what you may have seen as a lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipses tend to occur on average about twice a year on the Earth, but since it may occur during our daytime, we have a 50-50 chance of seeing each one. So on average, we will be able to actually visually see about one a year on average. So here's just the geometry of a lunar eclipse again, the sun shining on the earth. The earth creates a shadow, a large shadow that will cover the uh, entire moon. This slide is courtesy of MrEclipse.com, Fred Hispanic, who's a real a big advocate uh, of total eclipses. Um, this is the next total lunar eclipse that will be visible from the United States. This shows the region in which uh, is ideally suited for viewing the entire eclipse. Uh, and um, uh, where it's, it's going to be a year and a half from now. Uh, so it'll be January 21st, 2019, um, uh, occurring a little bit after midnight for the East Coast. So again, just to review, uh, lunar eclipse uh, visible from half of the Earth uh, and completely uh, the large Earth's shadow completely covers the moon, whereas the smaller um, uh, shadow of the moon during a solar eclipse visible from only a very small part of the Earth. That's what makes it so special. This is an animation uh, from uh, NASA uh, showing the moon, uh, the moon's shadow traveling across the Earth's uh, surface. And this is the 2017 uh, eclipse, August 21st, 2017 going across the western United States, then going across the central part of the United States, going co coast to coast. Very unusual, very rare for an eclipse to cover the entire continental United States. Uh, this has not happened in virtually anyone's uh, lifetime or in anyone's memory. The last eclipse that crossed the continental U.S. was in 1918. So it's been 99 years since that occurred. Uh, that doesn't mean that there haven't been other eclipses. There was an annular eclipse that was in 2012, but that was only visible from a small part of the United States, uh, and uh, it wasn't a total eclipse. But this gives an idea of what you should be doing when you're looking at the eclipse. The person on the left has eclipse glasses, watching it appropriately. This woman on the right, also watching the eclipse properly. This woman is doing the wrong thing. She has just regular sunglasses on, and she's then looking at it directly. That's very dangerous to do. I think this guy is doing the same thing. So um, uh, if you happen to have eclipse glasses, that's a great way to view it. But there are other ways to view an eclipse. So these are just some other uh, pictures of uh, people looking through uh, very dedicated equipment to look at the eclipse.
but you, you if you don't have any dedicated equipment you can just go underneath a tree this is underneath the tree trees act as little pinhole cameras uh, we don't recognize that because um, you know this the uh, light that comes through these pinholes are just little round areas underneath the uh, the leaves but it's not the shape of the leaf unless it's very close as in this case but uh, during the partial phases you can see crescents that'll project onto the ground this was late in the day so the crescents were projecting on the wall uh, this is uh, just some photographs of the annular eclipse um, when the sun first uh, sorry when the moon first starts to cover the edge of the sun and then this is about about as much of a crescent as we will see from the northeast uh, when the moon is covering about two-thirds of the sun a, an annular eclipse is different than a total eclipse you say well gee they're both to they're both eclipses of the sun but in cases of an annular eclipse remember I said that the moon is almost perfectly matched in apparent size to the sun it's 400 times closer but 400 times smaller but the moon doesn't take a circular orbit it takes an elliptical orbit so if the moon happens to be farther away from the earth at the time that the eclipse occurs the only parts in uh, true shadow will be above the earth's surface which is up here when you get down closer to the earth's surface there's still a ring of light uh, extending around uh, the moon in cases of annular eclipses and annular eclipses are uh, perhaps as many as half of all eclipses are annual eclipses so this is my photo of the annular eclipse and there's still um, a good bit of sun still around the edge uh, of the moon and uh, this is a, a dedicated solar telescope so we're able to see prominences now for this upcoming eclipse the moon will be closer to the earth um, than uh, in the case of an annular eclipse this is a photograph from uh, that I took of the 1998 total eclipse as it went over Aruba in the Caribbean but here the moon was uh, relatively close to the earth uh, in its orbit so it's appeared larger think like super moons when the moon is larger and when it's larger like this it completely covers the sun's surface and so the only light that you see is the outer corona something that's only visible to most people on earth uh, during the time of a total solar eclipse uh, this is just a map of the upcoming total solar eclipse of august 21st 2017 and it will be covering coast to coast across the united states uh, this is just a um, illustration from nasa that provides here's the sun the shadow coming from the moon onto a very small area of the earth but what are these other areas that are in gray well these are areas that will see a partial eclipse which is what we'll see in the northeast US. another animation from nasa uh, this is the moon traveling between the sun and the earth casting its shadow going across the earth's surface the shadow of the uh, moon onto the uh, earth uh, will cross in from Oregon across the central US and off the coast of South Carolina we'll show some other illustrations of that this is um, at the time that the eclipse is total in Nashville when you go to the Northeast uh, the farther north you are the which is the farther away you are from central line the smaller the eclipse uh, will appear so just another animation of this this is uh, viewing uh, from space uh, what the shadow of the uh, moon will look like crossing Salem Oregon uh, Boise Idaho closer to Idaho Falls through Yellowstone National Park Casper Wyoming going just south of Omaha Nebraska going across the upper edge of Kansas City brushing St. Louis Nashville Tennessee Columbia South Carolina Charleston South Carolina before before progressing out into the Atlantic Ocean
This is about what we'll see from the northeast U.S. We will see a crescent which is about uh, two-thirds of the sun's surface being blocked by the moon. So the timing of the eclipse in the northeast. Partial eclipse begins about 1.25 p.m. If you're further west, uh, you'll, it'll start a little bit earlier. If you're further east, say Boston, it'll start a little bit later, but, but approximately 1.25 p.m. And that's a time uh, taken for the area around uh, New York. Mid-eclipse is 2.45 p.m. Uh, and they'll get about 65% coverage, and the partial eclipse ends at 4 p.m. So about two-thirds of the sun's surface will be um, uh, covered. Near first contact, that's when the shadow of the moon uh, begins to block out part of the sun. This is actually the disk of the moon is up here, blocking out part of the light of the, of the sun. Uh, and this is what you'll see with your eclipse glasses if you happen to have or if you do a projection. So when this occurs, if you have eclipse glasses, only look at the sun through the eclipse glasses, unless you have some other very specialized equipment, uh, which most of the people in this audience won't have. Uh, then the eclipse will continue to progress. Uh, it's, it progresses rather slowly, so share your eclipse glasses. 10 people can share a pair, one set of eclipse glasses quite readily because you're not going to be staring at it constantly for the two and a half hour duration of the partial eclipse. You'll take a look for 10, 20, 30 seconds, and then you'll hand the eclipse glasses to somebody else uh, in order to let someone else view. So please be an ambassador if you have eclipse glasses and share them with other people. At 2.45 p.m., it'll be maximum eclipse for those of us in the Northeast, and you'll have about two thirds coverage of the sun. Then the, sh the, um, the moon shadow will uh, cover uh, will exit uh, off of the sun and then eventually it'll end around 4 p.m. So what uh, should you do for eclipse safety? You're watching this video, other people won't be watching the video, other people won't know anything about it. Please be an ambassador, uh, help other people view it safely. Let them know that they shouldn't look at the sun directly without special filters or eclipse glasses. Don't use regular sunglasses or smoke glass. The light is too bright and UV and IR, um, infrared, uh, ultraviolet can d damage your eyes. There are ways of doing pinhole projection. I'll show you some examples of that. If you don't happen to have eclipse glasses or even if you do, just to have a different way of looking at it, you can look through dedicated solar telescopes but not through any other uh, telescopes. Keep in mind that SLR and DSLR cameras let the light through just like a small telescope or binoculars would. And without filters, they can damage your eyes and binoculars can just take, uh, uh, just take two sheets of paper and uh, shine it, uh, um, let the sun shine through the pinhole onto the uh, second sheet of paper. Now this makes it look like it's magnified in a nice big view. It's actually going to be much, much smaller than this. Uh, and you can make this even more interesting by uh, creating a pattern of pinholes and then it'll create a pattern of crescents. So if you happen to be an artist, you know, do a silhouette of one of the children or, you know, whatever your hobby is. Uh, do a pattern and then take a picture of it. It'll be a nice memento. This person uh, here made a kind of a random pattern and you can see a series of crescents. You can see how small these project. You know, there's no um, uh, lenses here. It's just using a pinhole projection. So it's pretty small, but it is an opportunity uh, to view the eclipse if you don't have anything else available. Uh, you can take binoculars and project it and, and make it even larger. And I'll show you an example of that. But it's dangerous if you're going to be around children uh, to let them handle it because kids are curious and they may take the binoculars and look straight at the sun. So uh, if children are around, keep the binoculars around your neck. You know, don't let anyone else take it because, uh, you know, some, someone could really hurt themselves. Uh, so you can take it, uh, point it at the sun, and then have a nice sheet of white paper or uh, another uh, light colored background and you'll see a nice projection of the sun. This is a self-portrait that I took using a pair of binoculars that were on a tripod uh, and then projecting it into my own shadow. And you can see here near first contact, 
uh, the crescent of the um, uh, of the indentation of the moon's shadow onto the sun. Someone else here took a, a small telescope and pointed it down and projected this image of the sun. But you know this is a little tricky and dangerous because this you know if you happen to have a telescope, you walk away for a moment. Somebody's going to be curious and try to look through the eyepiece and they could hurt themselves. So be very careful if you use this technique. Uh, you can uh, try, if you happen to have dedicated solar filters, you can use those, but they have to be specially designed uh, for uh, this kind of uh, uh, photography. Uh, don't use just routine neutral density or other standard filters. They just won't be dark enough. Uh, if you want to get these filters and don't have them yet, you better call soon and make sure you have guaranteed delivery. Uh, it's it, at the time that I'm recording this, two weeks before the eclipse, it's going to be hard to get hold of them. Uh, they may not even be in stock. But there's two types. Some are snug fit. They fit uh, right to your um, telescope or camera lens. And the more secure ones are the ones that actually screw in. But these are just a few uh, vendors that carry these sort of filters. Um, these are reputable vendors. There are many reputable vendors out there. These are just two that I happen to have worked with. I don't endorse them in any specific way um, versus other vendors. Uh, but you want to make sure that if you do use them, go to a reliable vendor, uh, one that is, uh, uh, there's uh, ISO and there's another certification. And you can find out more about those uh, certifications online. So again, Northeast Timing the Eclipse, Monday, August 21st, 125 p.m. Consider going out early to get oriented. You don't want to be using your eclipse glasses for the first time, um, uh, preferably not at the time of the eclipse. Uh, you know, go out a few days ahead of time and just, you know, look at the sun with the eclipse glasses, of course, um, just to get comfortable with using them. You can bring a couple of sheets of paper for projection. Uh, and again, only use your eclipse glasses. The glasses are only for direct viewing. They're not to be used with binoculars. You have binoculars or a telescope, they can burn a hole through these eclipse glasses. So they're just for uh, the visual use with your eyes, not with any uh, artificial aids. Don't use the eclipse glasses if, you have, if they have scratches or holes. Uh, you can try patching them up with very dense nail polish if there's scratches or holes, uh, but uh, that's you know, a lot of people think that that's not uh, safe enough. Maximum time for the eclipse is 2.45 p.m., and the eclipse will end at 4 p.m. What happens if it's cloudy? Well, your next chance is in 2024. The blue line here is the path of the 2024 eclipse. It won't help you if you're on the West Coast, but it will come in through uh, from Mexico through Texas um, and up through the northeast. This red line here is a different kind of eclipse called an annular eclipse. I showed you an example of that. It's nice, but it's really not that much more exciting than a partial eclipse. Uh, this, the, the total eclipse is uh, one that's more exciting. So this is just a map showing the path of the, uh, from the Pacific Ocean going into, the, uh, into Mexico and then uh, from Texas up through the eastern United States and into Canada. Uh, the eclipse is going to pass almost directly over Cleveland, through Buffalo, Rochester, and then northern Vermont and New Hampshire, uh, and up into Maine. It's going to be going right through Lake Champlain. So uh, uh, you have many opportunities if you're up in the northeast and uh, don't want to have to go very far. But that's in 2024. So I want to thank you for listening. I hope that you have an opportunity to see the eclipse and to see it safely.